Okay, th thanks everyone for joining us. And and I only met on the, uh, what's it, September 6th, two and a half months ago, th three, yeah, not, not long ago. And uh, um, I feel like we, we really hit it off. And I know I, I, when I was in London on the way home, I rang Bernadette who was here and I said, oh my gosh, I met this person and, and her critical eye of adventure therapy is really good. But the other side, <laughs> the other side of it, oh, Bernadette, the other side is there are a few people who can, who can read Will very quickly. And the way Unda uh, makes fun of Will was like instantly she figured it out. And she made, she, it was things like, I'm a, I'm kind of a picky eater. And she called that out. And I went, who's this person telling me how to eat? And then I have a section of my book about being really <laughs> cautious about attention to detail. And her workshop is the one that had a 30 minute time mess up on it. And I went, ah, oh, she's going to call me out about this. And it really, um, it, it, it was something that if I look back at that conference and what I take away, it was really being able to spend time with Unda and learn more about the uh, Latvian community and what is happening there and how a country that is new to the terminology of adventure therapy actually navigates all these things that come from Australia, United States, Canada, the UK, maybe a bit in Norway, but these countries, how they can take these ideas and put it into their cultural context. And I think that um, is one of the things I really loved about our, our time together at this conference. And one of the, one of the funniest things Inda said, and I, I doubt you'll remember this, Inda, but um, Graham, Graham Pringle, who's presenting on Friday, if we're in Australia, and uh, Nevin Harper, who uh, from Canada, they both said, Will, you won't set up your tent in the middle of this soccer field. And I said, yeah, I would. So everyone was around the border. I said, no worries. So I set up my tent. And I come back, and there's one tent next to mine. And it was Undus. And as I walked back, I said, why did you do this? And she said, well, if you can't take care of yourself, someone's got to help out along the way, <laughs> which is exactly <laughs> what, what Will Dovet needs all the time. Really good coaching, some situational awareness from those around him, um, and some help with navigating uh, complicated situations. And, uh, and, and Unda was someone who did not hold back in you need to go and face some of these difficult conversations that I will typically avoid and just leave them into uh, peer reviewed bull crap instead of going to face and talk to people. Um, so Unda, thank you for being my, my new good friend and thank you for joining and uh, welcome to Australia and the, and the rest of the world. There's a lot of cool people here and uh, I'm really excited to hear a lot about this work. Thank you, Will, thank you. And uh, thank you everyone for joining today. Um, I feel very grateful to participate in this event and uh, it means a lot uh, to me to be introduced here and uh, yes, to actually be invited to, to participate in this because I really do feel like a newcomer in this, uh, in this adventure therapy uh, field and this is uh, very exciting for me, very exciting. So let's do this. Um, so why it's not, it's working. So yes, as Will said, my name is Unda. And uh, like three words about me, not, not just what Will said, but <laughs> what I decided uh, to tell about myself. So I have a pretty uh, multi-dimensional education. Uh, it, it comes from philosophy. I have a bachelor's in philosophy and then in occupational therapy. And uh, this year I finished my master's in social work. And uh, uh, mostly I work in social rehab program with uh, at-risk youth and the families. And I use adventure therapy and outdoor therapy interventions uh, with also with other things that I, uh, I do with them. Uh, and uh, I am also a lecturer at the Riga Strategy University. 
And uh, how did I came in this field? Uh, th about three years ago, there was this one amazing woman. Uh, she's Latvian, Lena Leitan, but uh, she lived uh, for 10 years in New Zealand and worked in the venture therapy field. And she came back to Latvia and she just gathered around a group of people from outdoors, from medical field, from psychology and um, social no social work not then not yet but uh, we came together and and she said hey you know there is this thing adventure therapy and we need that in Latvia and let's figure out how it is possible to do something in Latvia and we got some trainings and uh, we got some digging in literature and we build a small community but we still have it and it's quite strong right now in latvia and it's called adventure therapy latvia and i'm one of the founders of this community and uh, while being there and working to to build this uh, community we uh, i actually i actually uh, had to decide uh, what i'm going to uh, write my master thesis about and uh, it just came all together uh, and I decided to write it about adventure therapy because I really wanted to promote this uh, area uh, as well in Latvia because it's totally unknown <laughs> before that as Will told. Uh, I think uh, the term adventure therapy was uh, first uh, used in Latvia like just three years ago but it's already uh, becoming quite popular already because we had quite a big conference last year we had some kind of media recognition and other stuff so we are i think we're doing great job uh and uh, uh building this adventure therapy in latvia that's shortly about what is happening uh, here and about me but uh let's let's uh get to work and uh, talk about how adventure therapy can help um uh, for burnout mitigation and uh, prevention. And uh, to get on one page, uh, we should uh, agree on what is actually burnout. And uh, based on World Health Organization, burnout is a syndrome uh, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, co a consequence of a poorly managed st uh, chronic stress in the workplace. And based on this, I think it's called in English ICD-11, uh, uh, we use that in, in um, Latvia, it's not a disease, it's an occupational phenomenon. And uh, there are three main uh, elements that comes with burnout. It's lack of energy, like long lasting and persistent physical and emotional uh, exhaustion. Uh, it's this depersonalization when we feel alienated, uh, we don't want to uh, have these work responsibilities, we get cynical and uh, we kind of uh, are not so attuned to the, the work and the empathy. And there is this reduced efficiency uh, or, or reduced productivity in work and uh, the the specialists can have this lack, a uh, sense of uh, achievement, uh, and uh, they actually get uh, lower in their productiv productivity levels. So th these are the three main components of uh, burnout. And uh, and uh, due to the uh, uh, COVID nineteen, uh, I did so. I decided that I will write my master's thesis about uh, adventure therapy, but I needed to have a specific topic which I'm gonna. Uh, research and the burnout felt very good idea because uh, it happened uh, uh, at the at the at the hit of uh, COVID nineteen when burnout affected uh, sometimes even sixty to seventy percent of the representatives of helping professions. Mainly, they were not diagnosed, but uh, but they still felt a, a huge amount of burnout. And that was a huge problem in Latvia. So I decided that this might be a topic I would uh, work with. And when we talk about uh, uh, burnout, there are uh, two main factors that affect it. Usually we talk about work-related factors that can be organizational factors or social factors, but usually work-based. But uh, there are also personal factors. As I could not... Uh, change work environment uh, for people i could still uh, affect like like make changes in, in in people's personal factors for example uh like uh, attitudes or, or or emotional resilience and problem solving skills social skills and stuff like that 
And uh, this is uh, what is, has been recommend, recommended for mitigation and burnout prevention uh, to promote emotional resilience, to develop personal resources, to restore emotional balance and engage in physical activities. Uh, also to solve problems in small groups uh, and etc. So I thought that yes, adventure therapy can actually do that. If this is uh, recommended, then, uh, then uh, we could use adventure therapy interventions to change personal factors. And that could be the way how we can, uh, how we can uh, somehow in have this impact on burnout by not changing work environment. If uh, in, at uh, COVID-19, there was, uh, I don't know how it was in Australia, but in Latvia it was a huge crisis in workplaces because uh, uh, people had to work several shifts uh, because uh, everybody was sick. And um, and uh, so uh, the burnout hit like very, very high, uh, and uh, but we couldn't change work factors. So. So that was uh, the main idea uh, why we chose uh, the burnout and adventure therapy interventions as a potential uh, potential um, like uh, uh, potential uh, intervention to reduce it. So, so, so in, in the just for the Australian context, there was a lot of uh, lockdowns, a lot of stay at home, and a lot of when it came to those working in the education system or those working in healthcare settings, there became a lot more rules about and, and policies and procedures about what to do, what clothes to wear, when people were allowed, when family was allowed. And that also added to the stress of doing the job as a provider. Um, and so that's probably similar to what to what you're describing, that it added stress not only to those who got sick and, and the, the world became short staffed, but also that navigating the job and how to do it also became yes. harder. It, it was very, uh, it was these things that you said, but also other things. For example, uh, in the medical medical field, uh, research says that if there has, uh, if the uh, specialist has a high risk to had different kind of uh, uh, information, no, not uh, like, um, uh, disease from the patients. If the risk is very high, then the stress goes up, uh, and, and this chronic stress, if it's higher, then then of course uh, the the burnout is potentially higher as well. And um, we were very short on uh, uh, human resources uh, because a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people wasn't allowed to work uh, if they didn't want to vaccinate. So the workload got higher and higher and higher uh, for the for those who still stayed at home uh, at work. Uh, and for example, I had this one uh, participant uh, in the in the group. Uh, she was a doctor. She worked in a uh, neurological hospital with uh, 12 others, uh, other doctors. And when COVID hit, they were three doctors doing 12 doctor shift. So imagine that. Uh, it's quite a lot of stress, quite a lot of work. And uh, there was nothing really they could change there because they really needed these doctors, but there just wasn't anyone to work. Okay. So I, I, I hope that uh, you are all like uh, familiar with the concept of adventure therapy. Uh, we call in Latvia adventure therapy, uh, but um, but you can call it otherwise. I think in Australia you say bush adventure therapy, right? Or, or outdoors therapy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So so what we're what we're thinking about is uh, not everyone has to be a therapist, but it's therapy as in designed to improve people's well being. And, and the word adventure can be really quite limiting in different contexts because um, we've used adventure therapy as an umbrella term for quite a long time. And really, it doesn't have to be outdoors, but we want to include equine assisted therapy, horticulture, um, sitting in a park. You know, Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting did his best work in that movie on a park bench. And we'd like that to be included. So the word adventure can be limiting. We're really thinking about outdoor therapy and yep. or the and or the 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 use of active bodily engagement in therapy. And that includes play therapy and and a lot of these different things. So um, 
but but each country and cultural context is going to settle on a different term for that. Yeah, but I think it's uh, the idea is quite similar to to Latvia and Australia in this sense. Uh, and as there are not like a specific definition for adventure, I will use what uh, uh, Adventure Therapy Europe is saying about adventure therapy, that there are like these two basic elements that is in engagement in, in adventures or like physical activities and this therapeutic intent from both sides, from specialist side and from, uh, from client side. Okay. And uh, research says that uh, adventure therapy is very effective uh, for improving and developing psychosocial skills, uh, for changing behaviors, for uh, improving self-esteem, communication skills, stress management skills, and also other personal aspects. So I thought that this might be a very good uh, tool to use for burnout, as, as these are things that are recommended to change. And uh, I should mention that before this research, there was actually had not been done any uh, any like real adventure therapy intervention in Latvia before this, uh, like not in purpose purposefully, like uh, in this kind of uh, setting. And uh, I had not found uh, any study, uh, any like research uh, that uh, all around the world that had studied uh, adventure therapy effect on a, on burnout. Well, maybe now there is something else, but uh, I had not found before that. Okay, uh, now a bit about my research design, how I thought it's gonna happen and also how it happened. So I made uh, adventure therapy intervention program, uh, which was three days long program, uh, camping in wilderness with different kinds of activities and adventures. Altogether, there were 11 participants in, uh, they were divided into groups. Plus there was this test group before this uh, research group, just to test it out, how we should do it, then what's good, what's not, because as I said, this was like the first time thing we, we combined this uh, uh, group of uh, colleagues who helped me to um, uh, actually uh, ha have this happening. And uh, these were uh, specialists from the helping professions like teachers, social workers, medical um, doctors, nurses, uh, and trainers. Uh, they were from around Riga and they uh, subjectively experienced burnout. So they were not diagnosed as it's not a disease, but uh, they they had the subjective uh, experience of burnout. And the program was in three days, as I said. The first day was a hike along the river with different kinds of activities. Uh, we had this team building activities, trust building activities, and uh, we talked about uh, about uh, values and uh, and the problems actually and and the kind of uh, started to dig deep what what is happening with the, these participants and and uh, why they feel how they feel. The second day was more like adventure based group work on the campsite. We worked. Uh, with boundaries, setting boundaries, uh, work with emotional awareness and emotional literacy. There was a lot of psychoeducation uh, and we used a lot of uh, movement and dance therapy techniques in nature and things like that. Uh, but it was more to discover uh, like themselves and to discover how others uh, see them uh, and, and uh, how they actually feel in, in different kind of uh, settings and activities. And the third day was a solo adventure day. Uh, we stayed at uh, kind of, we had this campsite, like a base site, and they had seven or eight different kind of adventure activities they could choose. And they also could choose do nothing. And uh, there was also a possibility for one-on-one -on -one conversations all day long. And uh, so they could participate in one uh, activity or they could participate in like seven activities. Uh, that was the choice. And uh, there were... Uh, having their own rhythm and and, and uh, doing how they felt that what would they need. Uh, and the objective of this research was to find out uh, what are experiences of these uh, participants in adventure therapy intervention program, and also what effect this intervention can have on a burnout among these uh, helping professionals. Uh, and. Uh, uh, how I gained the data. So this was a parallel triangulation uh, mixed research. So I had this both qualitative and quantitative data. And before uh, intervention, uh, they 
all fulfilled this uh, professional quality of life measure where there's one section about burnout. There's also um, uh, other sections, but this, this was the main, uh, what I was uh, looking at. Then uh, there was this uh, intervention. Two weeks uh, later was uh, individual interviews with every participant plus this uh, professional quality of life measure. And then again, three months later, we had two focus group interviews with both groups uh, and plus again, this professional quality of life measure. So it's, it's a kind of uh, also a bit long-term research uh, in terms of seeing how these results stick. And uh, about the results. So we'll start with quantitative data. Uh, I should say that these data um, are uh, only to actually have this like objective measure of what people said, what, what these participants said. So I could like uh, compare uh, how these uh, things that they said about this, uh, how they feel uh, about burnout and how, how they feel uh, before and after the intervention, how they actually uh, can, how we can show that with the visual data. Uh, in, in this uh, with this measure. So uh, this uh, uh, professional quality of life uh, also assesses uh, uh, compassion satisfaction and secondary traumatic stress, but uh, I'm not showing you those things right now here because we don't have that much of a time. But as you can see, there are, there were 11 participants. The yellow one is uh, the results before intervention. The orange is uh, after two weeks and, and the brown one is after three months. And uh, the green line indicates uh, down below, it's, uh, it's a low uh, burnout uh, results. Uh, in the middle is moderate burnout and, and, and uh, uh, up above the uh, red line, there is high uh, burnout results. As you can see that uh, most of the participants after the intervention uh, for them, the burnout level dropped. There were only two participants. Uh, this is a P4 and P6 whose burnout level uh, didn't drop, but, uh, but actually got higher. Uh, both of them were the only ones who said that this program was too short for them. They needed more time to open up. Uh, to open up. And... Uh, also, these were uh, two participants uh, for whom we thought that there were actually other uh, mental health problems, not just burnout, but something more uh, problematic that uh, actually after this program, they uh, got some help from doctors and other specialists to, to, to treat uh, problems they, they identified in this program. So uh, this is uh, these are two participants who, who uh, didn't uh, reduce their burnout level, but all the other ones actually reduced it. Uh, some of them still had this moderate level of burnout, but, but it was still uh, reduced uh, like uh, comparing to the first result. Um, and okay, so it goes. Uh, so on the left side, you can see the, like some results uh, two uh, weeks after, and on the uh, right side, there are results three months after. So uh, there were seven and nine participants whose burnout score had decreased compared to the results before the intervention. And uh, there were two, uh, four participants and afterwards two participants whose burnout level after the intervention uh, got low level, so, so kind of like no burnout. And uh, the uh, median burnout uh, scores were 20% and or 80% afterwards. So, so the, these are the changes that we had uh, uh, in these burnout uh, scores. And there was one participant uh, whose burnout score improved for 70, uh, 67% mm. after these two weeks. Uh, this is, uh, I will go back uh, for you to see. No. Uh, it doesn't go like that as I wanted. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, the <laughs> participant number seven. Uh, so at the beginning, before the intervention, her burnout was very high, 45. Uh, 45. And then uh, two weeks later, it was only 15. So from the high to the low in two weeks, it was a huge uh, success, actually. Uh, so Linda, what about... Uh, Linda, yeah. I, I, have, I have a question. Yes. Um, one of the questions, 
so did all the participants re reply after three months? Uh, no, there were uh, two. One participant who actually uh, ah, I see. Participant. Uh, to, uh, this is P two. Uh, he didn't want to participate afterwards uh, in the research, and there was uh, is this P ten uh, who could not uh, participate in this individual interview because she was sick with COVID. Mm. Uh, so uh, I um, I don't have these data uh, in in unfortunately in my research, but all the other ones they did. All good. Yes. So uh, about the experiences. So uh, participants described adventure therapy as um, very significant, powerful, valuable, and necessary, helpful, transport, transformative, and every other like very, very uh, good word I could think of actually as well, because uh, the, the feedback was amazing. We didn't expect to have such amazing uh, feedback after this kind of uh, first time program, but uh, it was really, really amazing. And it was very um, valuable for, for them. Uh, and uh, I identified seven main themes they talked about when they talked about their experience in adventure therapy. Uh, the, the first was overall experience about all of the program, how they felt the program was. And uh, it was uh, usually very, very uh, good experiences, very helpful. And like uh, one participant said, <clears throat> I probably didn't expect it to be like this, but it was better than I expected. I didn't think there would be such effect, uh, effects and such a transformation. I can immediately say that I absolutely put adventure therapy in my top three for this year somewhere for sure. In terms of value, self-growth and self-analysis, it is definitely number one. In terms of, it, of its intensity, how much it gave in a very short period of time, and then also gave opportunities to work with it a lot. And it was all extremely valuable to me. And for this woman, uh, she also had the, the um, uh, she also got married in this summer, in that summer. So, so, uh, so uh, she put adventure therapy experience right next to her marriage. So it was uh, quite, uh, quite nice to hear these things, of course, <laughs> that, that it was uh, very, uh, very valuable for her. Uh, so a lot of, um, a lot of participants talked about the state of presence and just being there and a state of awareness of themselves and uh, they were able to disconnect from work uh, from families from friends and also from different kind of gadgets they were not allowed in this program so uh, so a lot of them just said it was definitely uh, like like this one this woman she said it definitely helped me to be able to just be there and not worry about anything else so there was no fear of missing out. There was no rush to anything. There was no time. We didn't know at what time we should do anything. There was no clocks, no nothing. But we just, uh, we were basing everything that we did based on like our senses and what we needed. So, uh, so there was no like strict schedule, nothing. And uh, it really helped them a lot. Uh, the other thing that is kind of also connected with this state of presence with, was uh, connecting with uh, nature. Uh, for example, this uh, person said, nature always has its own energy. And when you spend a longer time with nature, a feeling of life returns, uh, feeling that you are a part of everything that is happening around you, not only from people and not only from what we ourselves have created from the spaces we have created, but such a cycle of nature is more felt. And people talked a lot about nature and a lot about weather because we had different kinds of weathers and it didn't matter. We had in one group, we had a huge storm at the third day, like a huge storm. And it was, they said it was so great. There was the storm that they could feel the nature in its power and, 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 um, and, uh, uh, after this program, they said that they started to be in nature much more. They started to appreciate it. They started to see metaphors there and and see themselves there much more. And it came like a, for a lot of participants, it became like a source where they could get some energy and and fulfill themselves. Um, 
Next was emotional transformation. A lot of them really talked about different kind of emotions they felt uh, in this program and a lot of like transformational processes they went uh, through. For example, uh, there was this woman, she uh, wasn't actually participating in one activity, she was just watching it. And then at one uh, at one moment, she just started to cry a lot. And when we came there and asked, "What what, what is happening? What are what's happening with you?" She said, "I have no idea. I I don't know what I'm crying about. I'm just crying a lot." And 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 she did that for quite a long time. And afterwards, in this interview, she said, "I had the feeling that something much bigger than me was happening. I don't know, like magical feeling somehow." The, that there are actually some processes going on in the psyche or something inside. Yes, and after all that crying, I felt absolutely so clean. And since then, I got rid of something. So um, they experienced a lot of these kind of transformations and, and they understood a lot about themselves and different kind of metaphors and and uh, that came out from activities or came out from nature. and. Um, uh, yes, there was a lot of this emotional transformation they experienced. And uh, also one very important thing was this safe space. A lot of them don't feel really safe in their work environment because of these power dynamics and, and risks and uh, stress and uh, etc. And uh, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, participants had not uh, experienced that they can talk about how they actually feel. And uh, for example, this uh, participant said, there was the sense of security that we could talk and that you would somehow help to speak it out, that you would help to tell it to the end. I don't know. And so it was, it was safe and cool. And uh, just to experience the safe space that it is okay to be yourself, that it is okay not to be afraid or to be to be like uh, funny or 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 to have this all the time power dynamics it was very important uh for the participants uh another thing i uh already mentioned a bit was this autonomy uh we designed this uh program that people could actually choose what they want to do, when they want to do, how they want to do it. So they actually could uh, mm, participate in, 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 in building the program in a way. So uh, as, as they said, we had the opportunity to choose what to do and we had the opportunity to think about ourselves, our priorities, our core values. So there was uh, no like, uh, no, that kind of rules that you you had to do this, you had to do that. It was based on what they needed, and and they experienced that they can actually put boundaries and say no, I don't need this, I don't want this, or I need that, and and uh, they could choose for themselves. And this is also something that a lot of them can't do at workplaces. So uh, that was again a new experience for a lot of them. And of course, a group process. It's also uh, always very therapeutic, and uh, uh, group uh, group factors uh, helped a lot. Uh, group dynamic. Uh, for here, for example, one participant said that that the fact uh, that it was group therapy rather than one on one helped because first of all, listening to others in a way uh, made me think and connect something in myself. And the fact that others started leading me to their own things, which I might not want to see or can't see, it helped. So we we were like mirroring each other a lot. And we were like saying what we see in you, or what I saw what you did there and how it made me feel. And we did a lot of these things, these kind of reflections and, and it helped to identify um, what is happening actually in ourselves and because I realized there is one story we we tell ourselves about ourselves how we how we think about ourselves and and how we act but when we actually like act uh, or or when we are with other people when we are socializing then uh, actually uh, it can come out in a different way and others can see us in a different way um for example, there was this one woman, she said that 
I thought I have no problems with boundaries. I have already fixed this problem in my in my uh, in my uh, uh, in my life. Uh, mm-hmm. But after this activity, I see that's a lie. <laughs> like uh, we we can we can trick ourselves uh, with these stories about ourselves, uh, how how we see ourselves. But uh, when we actually engage in some kind of specific activity about that, and when when others can mirror us and say, "I thought I saw this in what we in what you did," then then we can actually see ourselves, not just hear ourselves, but see ourselves from a different perspective and see that. Oh no, this was a lie. My story was a lie. That's an illusion. I still have to work on this and that. So this is a group process. Group dynamic is uh, very, uh, I think, uh, good for, for, for these kind of things. Okay, and uh, what actually uh, I identified, the, what effects uh, people had on burnout after two weeks. I had to mention that not every participant had every effect, but these are things that they named uh, and said that have changed. Uh, Some of them had like three or four things, others had more things. So uh, every participant had different outcome in a way, but uh, this is what uh, they mentioned. So uh, what things improved? Psychological functioning, Emotional regulation, they mentioned that a lot. Uh, stress management, uh, energy level for some, not for not for a lot a lot of participants, but for I think uh, I think four participants mentioned energy level. Uh, then uh, a lot of said that relationships, mostly with family and friends, changed, uh, improved um, in terms of that the, they could actually talk about how they felt and they they had the tools uh, how to do that uh also uh relationships with colleagues how to give like a positive feedback uh non like non-violent uh, uh communication skills uh they 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 gain uh so they could use them uh in their everyday life and also what changed uh a lot of uh, them said that their attitudes changed like uh, how they how they thought about their work about their families about uh, nature about about themselves, a lot, a lot of things changed about themselves and and uh, behavioral patterns. They mentioned uh, different kind of uh, stories, uh, specific stories, uh, what changed and how they would have uh, acted before the program and how they're acting now after the program. For example, when they uh, when they meet a person who is in distress, who is very angry, what are they in behavior patterns? Uh, Greater self-care, that was uh, one thing that a lot of people mentioned more, like uh, giving time for themselves, even during uh, work hours, just going for a small walk or uh, having uh, having weekends for uh, just for themselves, not for work, or going outside more, uh, using nature as a, as a healer uh, and uh, things like that, or, or, or sporting once in a week or something like that. Also new habits and new hobbies, like developing hobbies, using Slackline, for example. Uh, uh, I think three participants after the program bought Slackline because we used it in Slack in, in program and they started to uh, p- uh, practice that. And a lot of new insights and revelations. Okay. Uh, for example, this was uh, one uh, example about how they felt after the program. Uh, going back to that work environment, I think I was a lot more relaxed and still and those uh, these two weeks since adventure therapy there are things that i look at more relaxed i sense that this professional activity of mine doesn't penetrate so deeply into me and i don't associate it so much with my personality i am more able to direct it in a productive positive form and professional relationships i stopped my pursuit of the result being in control and now i focus a little more on building relationships and atmosphere thinking about the things and feelings during the day helps me to be more balanced in my emotions and my mood throughout the day so I think uh, this is a quite good result that we actually wanted to uh, gain after uh, the intervention. And what about three months later? So the, the, we hit the great COVID wave like uh, uh, shortly after the, the program and I thought it's gonna ruin all my work and nothing's gonna stick with them. But 
so, so for uh, some participants, the COVID uh, worsened, uh, worsened the results, and that was expected. But several participants still mentioned that they continue to practice what they learn in adventure therapy. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And that was very nice. They still still uh, practice uh, the, the self-care things, the feed, uh, how we uh, teach them to give feedback and, and communicate and stuff like that. So it was great. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, some of the participants uh, after the program, a turn to specialists to continue solving various psycho-emotional difficulties. So uh, there was depression and other things. So, so uh, they needed more help afterwards. And as one participant said, uh, after adventure therapy, it seemed that now is the time and everything will happen. She was a bit uh, euphoric after the program, actually. Those emotions were very high. Uh, now they have decreased a little, but they have not fallen down. They are in such a normal phase. I continue my determination to devote an hour a day to myself, which I continue to do during pandemic. At the moment, I have somehow absorbed energy. Somehow I am trying to maintain it in myself and work with myself. And now I feel good at work. She still had moderate level of burnout at least three months later, but she said that she feels good at where she is and, and uh, like uh, um, having these difficult conditions with pandemic, but it was still quite good. And uh, there were some uh, things that they said about the program that they needed. So first, they all of them said that there is a need for these adventure therapy programs for burnout and prevention because they said this works. Uh, yes, this should be as as an like normal intervention for everyone who uh, experiences burnout. And but they said these interventions should be like uh, longer or or like in a in a in a long term. In, in I don't know how how should said in English. So so that they needed they wanted to see. Uh, the group like uh, one month later and then again one month later just to uh, repeat themselves these main insights uh, not to forget them and to have this uh, group support in long term uh, as this one participant said succession I think is very important because it is very easy to go back to some unusual ways of thinking and old habits adventure therapy is that first stage, which is like a big boost, but after a while it starts to slip back somehow unconsciously. And such repeated meetings could be like a stepping stone to move forward. So this is something we should think about uh, to actually uh, uh, provide these kind of programs that, that are longer term, so they could meet each other uh, for a longer period. And so some conclusions. Um, so I would say I can't have like these broad conclusions because uh, participants were only 11, I had only 11 participants and um, I don't have like very strong quantitative data, but I would say that uh, uh, inter adventure therapy interventions can have very uh, good effect on burnout syndrome, uh, alleviating burnout syndrome uh, for uh, helping professions. Not for all of them because adventure therapy is not uh, appropriate for every uh every uh uh person in in this in this world but uh, for a lot of them it can be very good uh, but the effectiveness and impact of adventure therapy on, on reducing burnout is uh, very related to the participants readiness uh, for change and the conscious implementation of learned skills and attitudes on a daily basis after this program and uh, yes, there is there are different kind of these positive changes. We noticed this is like uh, in these uh, various personal aspects, such as like this emotional resilience, uh, psycho emotional, and psychosocial functioning, and uh, these things can uh, be uh, they can greatly affect the, the the reduction of burnout, but also other things. So we can use adventure therapy interventions at least in Latvia, because we don't have it a lot, uh, in, in different kind of uh, problem problem areas. So not only in burnout, uh, but in, in order to improve this effectiveness of uh, these kind of programs, we really need to create long-term programs to ensure this uh, continuity and, uh, and to support all of the needs uh, for the participants. 
So uh, these are the references, but I don't think you um, you're gonna read them. So <laughs> just skip to the last slide. Uh, so I would like to thank you very much for listening to this. Um, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Inda. There's been great dialogue. And I, uh, Mark Kartner, who is my sounding board, has just said he has to bail in less than five minutes for his uh, daughter's birthday. Mark, are you here right now? You can't. Hey, yes. Will, I'm here just for a few minutes. OK, I just wanted to bring Mark in because Mark, Mark joined late. He had a. Uh, um he had a uh um he was he was busy and he, and he joined a bit late but mark has a really interesting story about uh burnout that i thought and, and i do want to engage with everyone but having mark here for just a few minutes mark was a uh child abuse detective for many years and and you had your own mark i'm speaking on behalf of you which i know is a no-no so tell me to shut up whenever you want but <laughs> okay. but you are somebody who um has been in remote australia doing incredible work in, in in indigenous populations and 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 there was a time when you hit the wall and you and you kind of whether we call it burnout or 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 or, or, or some trauma as you've discussed how has your own personal adventures helped you with that? Um, well, I think that's the only thing that sort of saved me, to be honest, um, and sort of helped my mind sort of comprehend everything. Um, a mix of probably my personal adventures. You know, I took up surfing directly as a response to, um, I just instinctively felt that that was something that would help me just deal with not necessarily child abuse, but child death. So that was what really got to me. And then mm. the work that I did uh, in the adventure therapy space with kids, I, I always say that was as much for my benefit as it was for the kids that I worked with, mm. um, most definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you can go have a birthday now. Your job is done, Mark. <laughs> See you later. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> I just saw him come in and Mark has such a good story and I, and and... And in Mark's story about going, I can't do this job anymore. I want to move to this job and I'm still going to do impactful work with young people. So, uh, Mark, I saw you came in and I threw you, I threw you under the bus. Sorry about that. Anytime. Uh, um, no, no, it was so, it was so nice to see people realize that, that it, it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with the adventure or, or doing these crazy activities and, and, and go skydiving or go rock climbing. It can just be just doing something different that's in, 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 uh, in relation to, to some sort of uh, rejuvenation. I don't know what the opposite of, of burnout is, so I, I can't, I, I don't know what the terminology is. Um, but is there other people in the in the chat that that would like to chime in and or put something in the uh, chat box? And uh, those who want to hear from Mark, he's presenting on uh, Thursday, Australia time. Um, Laura, you unmuted yourself. I did. I'd love to ask a question if I could. Unda, that was wonderful. Thank you really really awesome and inspiring um it's so lovely to see these sorts of programs being done for for adults as well like often so often you see the sort of child version of the research that i get it's really good to see this um i was going to ask you were talking about how the changes um that the effectiveness of it was um like when, when participants weren't sort of ready, those were the ones that didn't really benefit as much, the ones that weren't quite there yet. I was wondering if from your experience, like if there's anything that you think that um, there could be done in the lead up to a program mm -hmm. to increase participants' readiness um, or prepare them um, a, a bit more or something like that. Is there anything oh, oh. that you think can move people a bit ready? A bit readier uh yeah for, for example for some people they really needed more time 
so the, this program should be longer. Uh, so they needed more time to open up. They need more time to trust other uh, group members because uh, this is one thing they said that it's very hard for them on everyday basis to trust other people. So three days were, was not enough for them uh, to, to have this real uh, trust-based uh, relationships that they could open up uh, freely about what actually happened because uh, of course, World Health Organization said that burnout is only related to workplace. But from my perspective, what I uh, saw in this program, that that's not really true. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for a lot of people, uh, for those whose burnout was uh, the highest, they usually had some very traumatic events at home they had experienced or some very like hostile relationship at, at home and work was some was a place where they run away from home so they became workaholics just not just only because they was not able to be by themselves or be with their relationships so they wanted to they had to run away from that so they put themselves into the work and they, they were overloaded with it. So they could not put any like um, um, healthy boundaries of how much work they should do, uh, should be doing or or how much pressure should they have because uh, um, they were actually running away from things. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of work we did in this program wasn't actually related to workplace or or or. Uh, how they felt in the workplace, but it was how they felt at home and how they could treat their relationships at home. And when home base was better, then after the, uh, after the uh, work day, they could go home and feel safe. And this was a place where they could like re 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 recreate the energy and get some rest, not have some, uh, again, fights. They didn't have fight all the day. So um, these people whose results were not that high had greater problems at home. They uh, were not able to talk about uh, in this with uh, about these problems in group, but only individually with me, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, so they were not ready to to open up that much and i think that this is one of the reasons why the results were not that good for them because they were not ready to change these things to face actually what is happening at home in that level right yeah 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 thank you you're welcome <laughs> thank you for your question <laughs> thanks thanks laura for that question um we have two social science week celebrities here that we're going to put on the spot um we have Charlene, who is presenting tomorrow, uh, just about 24 hours from now. And also, the, the other person that joined is Graham. And he, Graham joined just now. He just finished a training that he did. And uh, I wonder if, if Charlene, if you're still here, or if not, that's OK as well. Um, but, but oh, good, Charlene is here. Um, I wonder what the, if the two you want to speak to, to are, I mean, all the, like the, the three of us and Undu, we get to go outside and work with clients and that's really nice. And, and Nevin Harper has talked a lot about how there, it might be nicer to work outside that, that we might end the day a bit rejuvenated and, and less burned out. And I, I don't know if there's research to support that, but I like the idea of it. I know for me, I could expedition forever and, and not be burnt out. At least I haven't felt it yet, but me needing to do administrative tasks, oh, brutal. So I wonder, Charlene and Graham, if you're here, what, what are the things that, that work for you? Yeah, um, as someone that's transitioned into more administrative tasks, in the last few years um yeah. I definitely know that I struggled <laughs> um <laughs> yeah look but injury sometimes does that to you um I really had to make a choice at one point did I want to be active in my professional or my personal life and I really chose to go with being able to do what I wanted in my personal 
um, which helps keeps me recharged for professional. So I do, um, I'm lucky to live in a beautiful part of the world and I quite often start my morning um, going for a walk down to the beach. Um, if I am having a rough day, we have very flexible work arrangements and I go to the beach and I'll just take my phone so I can still work if someone needs me for something, but I'll often go and sit down there to recharge um, for a few hours if that's what I need. Um, you know, I've got bushwalks nearby. Um, I've got kayaks up, surf, like all those kind of water sport things. And, and that's the kind of stuff that I do do if I'm just needing the headspace um, to get out because staring at a screen really um, does start to do your head in. And particularly I, I work in child protection industry. So it's hard. We see burnout with um, our own stuff as well. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely valued. Yeah, thanks, Shirley. And I'm looking forward to your presentation as an ocean crosser <laughs> tomorrow. I cannot wait. Yeah. Graham, what about, you to, what about you to put you on the spot, Graham? Welcome. You missed the whole thing, but it, I hope you have something interesting to say. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that you can hear me. Is my microphone working? Yep, you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, I think your your question was how do I um, uh, look after myself in mm. uh, in the work that we do? Um, I, I have a wonderful wife who <laughs> listens to my angst and worries, um, shares my anger and frustration sometimes, um, and uh, I also have three dash hounds, so very small dogs who. It listen endlessly to what I have to tell them, um, and they cuddle up with me also when I'm I'm feeling um, feeling the pressure of things. But to be honest, working with young people outdoors, um, it, I find it refreshing on the on the whole. Um, there are some days where I find a little bit of boredom, perhaps when things are going slow, um, and I there are some young people who trigger me off because I've, I find bullying and being cruel to peers, I, I find that really difficult to deal with. And so to protect, to, to help us, me then, I have to ask my colleagues to step in and do the work that I'm not fit to do at those times. I think that's, that's what keeps me going uh, when I'm on the job is, is colleagues I can lean on when I'm not able to do that, that work well. Mm. Don't know if that helps the conversation and sorry I wasn't no. here earlier under. I think this is very important uh, note because uh, the uh, being able to ask for help is also very important uh, to to prevent burnout because uh, in Latvian context it's uh, usually for a lot of specialists it kind of resembles the, the the idea of being weak if if I cannot deal with this by myself and I can see others can uh, tolerate a lot of suffering and I cannot then it means that I'm weak and I, I, I also have to like suffer to be like professional or something like that and not setting like right boundaries and not asking for help and not saying what we actually need and not being able to have the safe space where we can talk about what we feel and, and, and what, what, what we need and how this day actually went. It's, uh, it's terrifying and it gives even more and more pressure and more and more stress and we have quite, I don't know, I would say violent uh, work environment in a lot of places. The work culture is not that good. And uh, uh, the power dynamics, <laughs> they are sometimes awful. So all this comes together and it, it builds up this burnout. And, and having this like amazing wife to talk with, it's, uh, it's a huge, like a huge plus uh, to, to reduce burnout. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's only work-related. It, it has so, so much more um, impact from family as well, whether or not you have a safe space to go after the work day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and yeah, that's such a good point. And, and I would add to that, that, that feeling comfortable to admit that something is out of your depth is really important because we won't be, we will never be everything to everybody. And the longer we pretend to be, the more cases we will bring into our caseload 
that we're not the right fit. And the longer we do that, the more bad outcomes we'll have. And bad outcomes will start to slowly tell us we're not good at our job. And that doesn't mean, you know, totally vet all of all of our clients on, are you the perfect client for me? But it means knowing that, hey, early on in the piece, this is not working and I'm not helping the way I know I can help. And so let me let me help that person get to somewhere else um, and get to someone who might be a better fit, which is a great, great thing to do. That's uh, uh, it's it's great to help help people get to the right thing. Um, and uh, this was a fantastic presentation and thank you for doing it. And uh, I, I really appreciate it. And, and I know speaking on behalf of, you know, this was your first international adventure therapy conference that we all met at in June. And I know your name has popped up in conversations with, with my inner circle. I know Graham talks about his, his, his uh, amazing wife. I also ring Graham all the time and go, you will not believe what just happened. And so I have Graham as an amazing uh, side note as well. Um, is there something that you want to end with so we can let you go have a have your own day's adventure? And um, but I'm just so appreciative of 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 you uh, doing this. And and as I started this, I'm I'm very appreciative of your friendship and uh, you just uh, meeting me and and figuring me out to a T in a way that sort of creeps me out a little bit. But that's uh, um, that's for me to unpack. You're the mirror, you know. <laughs> Um, um, is yeah. there anything that you'd like to say to end so you can go have a, a Tuesday morning and the Australians can have a Tuesday night? Yeah, so I would like to say big thanks to you all and uh, thanks for welcoming me in this community, in this world community, and I'm very, very grateful for this and uh, I am really a newcomer and uh, I, I know I have a lot of uh, things to learn from you, but uh, uh, for you to listen to me, it's very, very inspiring that uh, this is a new experience, uh, like in, in, in Latvian community, that the, the, the elders are listening to the newcomers. So uh, that is a very, um, I think, great experience uh, to, to, I don't know, share how, how we see these things and what we have experienced. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for coming today and uh, also participating in this and uh, sharing your thoughts. So thank you. And thank you, Will. This is amazing. Uh, I'm very, very glad that I met you in Norway. That's one of the greatest things I I, 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 <laughs> I get from Norway. So. <laughs> really. Oh, you. it's so funny. What I what I love, this is what I, I have to end with this, that... that we walked back to our tents. It was the last night. We had a dance party, this and that. It's probably in for context. We you look at Graham's video, that's the darkest it ever got in while we were in Norway. It, it didn't get dark at all. And Unda said to me, you know, we were chatting about wrapping up the conference, and I said it meant the world to meet you. And, and Unda said it was really great to meet you. And then Unda said, Do you hug? And a bit of me went, I can't believe she asked because no, I don't like being <laughs> hugged for no reason. <laughs> and I went, this person knows me better than, than a lot of people that, that I know in the field that I'm not really touchy feely. <laughs> and so, but I just, uh, you know, it was fantastic. And I'm so grateful for you to put this together and do that do that work um with that i'm going to wrap this up and 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 so we can all go have dinner graham thank don't worry about being late you had training and all this crap that you had to do and, and there's a recording anyway um but just so you know to to a lot of you we have uh charlene tomorrow at, at about the same time as this started hopefully i'm going to double check that we don't muck up the times um and then the following day we have ben knowles who's the international rep from australia uh, followed by Mark Kartner, who we heard a bit from, who is, both of them are very awesome. And then we have Graham talking about human rights and also Doug Mazinski following that on the Friday. 
So um, if you'd like to like to register for it, if, if you register, you'll get all the recordings and, and that makes things easy. But anyway, um, Jay, good to see you in the in the chat um, as well. Um, but anyway, thank you everyone for for sticking around tonight and uh, thank you Inda for putting this together. Um, and uh, it's really nice to engage with the international community um, as always, and to share my friends um, who are brilliant with everybody. Thank you. All right, see you all. Have a good night. <laughs>